hello you guys today i'm gonna be doing a little bit of a personal video so i'm just getting nice and cozy here no makeup nothing it's still early in the morning um so yeah it's gonna be a chill video but i'm gonna go over some things that have helped me grieve um, I'm going to explain grief a little bit, how I deal with it and cope with it, and all of those things. So, no need for an intro. Let's just jump right into this. The biggest thing that I've kind of learned about grief is that it's not like a phase in your life. Grief is something that you're going to live with forever. And it's something that I'm learning every single day to kind of adapt to. Um, and it always reminds me that it's still there. So that's kind of one of the main ways that's helped me cope with grief is understanding it and realizing that this isn't a part of my life that I'm just going to get past. It's something that is almost like a tool that I'm going to carry along with me through life in my toolbox. Um, and that's just kind of a helpful way to think of it and also a way to kind of turn the negative narrative of grief. So now that you have a little bit of a better understanding about grief or now you know my perspective on grief and my perspective on grief just kind of helps me. And like I said, it just basically takes away that negative mindset to grief and use it more towards motivation and empowerment. So one of the first things I have. I have a little list here and the first thing I've actually got two little subcategories for it. So one of the first major things that has helped me with my grief is self-discipline and that basically just means holding myself accountable, keeping myself on track and it doesn't have to be like a punishment thing. It's just you know, okay, maybe I didn't do so good today, we'll do this tomorrow, planning things out, making sure I have a plan. For me, some of the ways that I have to kind of discipline myself are certainly habits and self-care. And those are probably like my two big things. And I think those kind of correlate with each other. Um, if you're not taking care of yourself, your habits are gonna be bad. And if you're taking care of yourself, your habits are typically good or better or healthier or whatever. So into that subcategory, the first thing I have is therapy. And of course, this is gonna be talked about. I think anyone who is struggling in their life, whether it's with grief, whether it's with their self, um, you know, having a hard time at home with their surroundings, whatever i think if you need any type of advice on a like any type of scale really uh to go see a therapist about it because they're professionals that's what they're there for there's a huge variety of therapists and i know that the word therapist can throw people off but there's also like self-help coaches um you know and there's there's all kinds of things so you don't have to think of it of like i have a problem and i need to go to a person who is a problem fixer that's not the idea of therapy the idea of therapy is to find someone who's gonna guide you through your journey and that can you know go over your personal problems ideas you have you know even like your ideas for the day, I really like therapy because it can be very casual. You don't have to go over anything that bothers you per se. If you just want to talk about how your week went, you can talk about how your week went. You don't have to be like, oh my gosh, like this is all the trauma I have. If you don't want to get into that, you don't have to. And I think that's what's really nice about therapy. You do have to find a good therapist and I realized that can be really difficult. I got super lucky and I found a great therapist right off the bat. I would recommend looking outside of insurance and I know that's maybe not financially possible for a lot of people, but you have a million times more control over the therapist you want to have and the kind of therapy you're going to get. And I just, I think that is really, really important. Don't let your insurance, you know, like stick you to a provider and a schedule for therapy. Do it on your own schedule. Find your own therapist. It's trial and error. 
but therapy is going to be the biggest thing for you along with self-discipline disciplining yourself to go seek help and leave it to a professional so my second subcategory to the kind of self-discipline point i'm trying to make here is applying yourself to something so yes you can go to therapy yes you can be holding yourself accountable and have healthy habits and all that but it will be really really difficult for you to continue that cycle if you're not doing anything with it so you know you can be going to therapy and you've got all these you know helpful tips and ideas and all this stuff but you know maybe you're not really doing anything maybe you're going home and dwelling on all those thoughts and you're not putting it into effect so you actually have to do something with your discipline and so that can be in multiple things that could be cooking for yourself making sure that you're eating good every day going for walks going for runs working out joining a gym um let's see learning like for me i'm not in school and so even like downloading duolingo like if i'm bored and i'm sitting on my phone i'll just like start a spanish lesson it takes me 10 minutes watching youtube videos that are actually informative most of the time i will put on a youtube video and i'll sit and take notes on it which is way more productive in my opinion than just sitting there watching it and probably not <laughs> actually retaining any of the information when you're writing it down you can go back and look at it and yeah i just think that's really really important obviously you can have self-discipline but when you're not putting it into effect in your life you're gonna burn out it's not gonna go anywhere okay so obviously my first point was really in depth that's probably the biggest point i'm gonna go over just because i think that's the most important you come first in your grief and you have to establish the foundation before you can continue to go up so on to the second point the second point i want to make is that you need to have a little bit of understanding and this is kind of taking yourself out of the picture and putting yourself in their shoes for a little bit and being able to forgive and being accepting of love and releasing all the anger and the negative thoughts if you hold on to anger you hold on to grudges you hold on to confusion whether that's at yourself at the person you're grieving you're gonna go to the grave with that and it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good to have weight on your chest all the time um for me i i don't feel guilt or anything to my parents but i think one of the biggest things and i personally didn't struggle with this too much but being able to forgive my parents for everything that i went through and acknowledging that they also suffered it can be really hard i think everyone's grief can be circumstantial when it comes to how you accept it if you're loving about it if you hate it you know you have to have a better mindset about things and even if you have to gaslight yourself a little bit and be like my day is shitty but I still woke up today, I still have the rest of the day, and even if you don't have the mentality to turn your day around, I think just subconsciously trying to trick yourself into having a better day, it literally helps. And I know it sounds weird. I know people are like, how is that even possible? You have to just walk yourself out of negative places in your life. And, you know, going back to therapy, therapists are going to help you with that 100%. So if you're on the direction with that, I think letting go of the anger and understanding the circumstances more and really internalizing the grief and figuring out why your body's reacting a certain way, what is triggering you, all those kinds of things. I think once you go to therapy and you're on that direction, those things come much easier and you will live a much better quality life, not having hate and grudges in your heart. On to the third point that I'm gonna make, and this kind of has a little bit to do with the second point, is that you need to slow down and you need to go at your own pace because I think grief really, you can prepare for it as much as you want to. And you know, for most people, there is no preparation. There's just grief and it can be really unexpected. And that is 
really, really difficult to work through. Here's kind of my perspective on things. Obviously on an interstate, you're able to go like 70 miles an hour plus because there's plenty of lanes, it's a well-developed road, like it's not some shitty like gravel back road. If you try to drive that speed on a gravel back road, your car would bust into a million pieces, it would be destroyed, it would be a mess. You can't do it, it's not possible. So that's kind of how you have to think of grief. You can't expect to be running out the gates like you have been your whole entire life and get the same outcome. You're gonna explode like the car on the gravel road. And I understand that you also have to ease yourself down into a slower point because especially when grief is unexpected, it can be super consuming of your energy and your life pretty much. You know, a lot of people fall into like a major depression when they have an unexpected loss and it is something you can't really prepare for. But if you just slam on the brakes, that's not a good idea either. It's, it's really difficult because there's like, there's the high pace and there's the low pace and then there's also the should I feel guilty because I'm not catching up the way I always have been? You know, should I feel guilty because I'm being super slow today? You have to find your own pace. You can't like bully yourself. You have to just take it day by day and be accepting of yourself. Okay, today I had a plan of all the things I wanted to do and it didn't really get done. I didn't have the energy today. That's fine. Go at your own pace. Just because all your friends got all the shit that you wanted to do today done doesn't mean that you're not going to get it done by tomorrow or by this week. And also, it doesn't matter. Stop comparing your progress to someone else's. You have your own timeline. You have your own goals to sit there and be like, oh my gosh, like, how did they do that before me? Or how were they able to do that? You're doing your own stuff, and I'm sure they're saying the same thing to some of the things that you're doing. So keep your ideas and your life personal to you at your own pace, okay? Keep your goals personal and keep your pace personal. So my fourth point that has helped me get through my grief is understanding responsibility and taking responsibility and I don't even know exactly how I want to explain this, but at least in my personal circumstance with my parents, there was nothing prepared for their death. And so everything just fell on me at once, physically, financially, emotionally, in every way, everything that I've had my whole life and some of it, you know, I wasn't responsible for, now I'm responsible for it. And... It was so unbelievably stressful in the beginning and I, I didn't know how to start. I asked other people for help, people that I shouldn't have listened to, I listened to and regretted it. So this is really, really, really important, especially for those who are grieving people and maybe it was unexpected, there's nothing prepared. That in itself is like, a whole nother grief and I, I see you and I'm gonna help you out. And the first thing that you need to do is you need to evaluate the responsibilities. So get you a nice file folder. Girl, this whole thing is just paperwork to the max. Organize things, okay? Organize stuff, put a label on it, put a sticky note and write it word for word what it is. You know, make it easy for you because shit gets complicated and I think, I think having yourself organized is just, it's laying the foundation. You can't continue to add on unless you have a solid foundation. You need to know what's going on, okay? You need to know, a big thing that helped me was writing down dates. So like my parents' bills and stuff like that. Y'all, I was having to pay for that. I was literally paying their bills out of pocket for a while and I had to write down when the stuff was coming up. I wrote down when like home insurance was ending um, because there's also, of course there's like monthly bills, but there's also annual bills. And those are things you have to keep up with. I mean, you know, it's part of your responsibility now and it's not fun. Like, don't get me wrong. It's not fun to do it, but 
if you're not organized, it's going to make grieving 20 times harder because you're going to put your grief in place of the anger and the frustration. And you don't want to get your grief mixed in with your personal problems. You know what I mean? You don't need to be like, oh my gosh, all of this is because my mom and dad died. Okay, yes, but it's not their fault. You know what I mean? You can't like blame mom and dad for all this happening um you can't blame death for all of this happening it's inevitable we all know we're gonna die we don't know when just make sure you know what's going on like i said do the most get you too many file folders label everything because later on down the road it's gonna be so convenient you're gonna be like oh my god i already took care of that okay i know what's going on you have to know what to prepare for so evaluate your responsibilities and be organized okay whew, I'm like breaking a sweat over here that was a lot um okay so i'm on my last topic here number five this one is i put it last because it makes a lot of sense this is how you're gonna get closure throughout your grief and like i said grief doesn't end you don't necessarily get closure it just becomes a little easier to understand and you learn to live with it a little bit better so i think for number five i wrote that you need to remind yourself of the person that you're grieving and i know for some of you you're like no shit <laughs> that's not a problem for me but there's gonna be a lot of people that are like damn you know I really did like put all this behind me and it's not that you're doing it to the person that you're grieving you're doing it to the pain that's in your heart and I cannot stress how bad this is for you do not try to ignore your grief it's just crazy how grief will slowly kill you if you don't address it you know it's really really dangerous and I I didn't even realize how dangerous it was. I knew that I knew that if I didn't handle my grief on a professional level, that it could come with some mental health consequences that I've seen in my family. I did not know that it can come with physical health consequences. Like literally, you have to address your grief, okay? Um so let me get back on track here so reminding yourself of your loved one it is really easy not to forget necessarily but to try and move past it and i guess for people it just makes them sad every time they bring it up and I, that's where you need to flip the script it it doesn't have to be sad you know life was you know, for me, I love my parents. My parents were my best friends. And so it doesn't really make me sad when I think about them because I know how much they loved me and I know how good they were to me. And of course I went through shit with my parents. Don't get me wrong. Am I going to put that above my love for them and their love for me? Hell no. Absolutely not. And that's what's going to eat you alive if you do that. You have to remember the good times and you have to embrace their loss. And like I mentioned previously, you know, living for them, that honestly has been really healing for me because they don't have their life anymore. Obviously, you know, I'm still here. There's still time for me. There's still a life for me to make. And it makes me happy when I think, you know, my dad or my mom would be so proud of me right now for sticking through this and doing this so i think that can be a major motivator is thinking about the person behind the grief you know they would not want you to be in a depressive state and just wasting your life you know live your life you woke up today you have time you have time okay don't give up um you really have to embrace the loss and embrace the grief and make something out of it you can let it eat you alive or you can actually let it bring value into your life and value to the experiences your knowledge you have to remember that you've learned something really special from your grief everything happens for a reason you're supposed to use that in your future and throughout your life 
and to be mad that it happened and try to not understand it that's not healthy there's no point in doing that you know that's like someone like gifting you something and you just crumbling it up in their hand and being like why would you give this to me you know it's like what the hell don't be a dick about it it might suck like of course grief sucks of course loss sucks i would literally do anything for my parents to be back but that's not gonna happen and I have to move on with my life and I have to figure out, I don't have to figure out why this happened. I just have to acknowledge that it happened and learn what to do with it and create something out of my grief. And that doesn't mean like, oh, my parents died, I'm so sad. Like, no, dude, I'm actually living my life today because my parents died. I'm not sitting on my ass and crying about it. I'm living my life because they didn't get to today. So. You just gotta flip the perspective. And technically that was my last point, but one of the biggest things is to forgive yourself. And like I said, every grief is circumstantial, but trauma weighs the same. And if you are blaming yourself for someone's loss, um, or you know, you are blaming yourself for not being a better person, you really have to throw that mentality out the window. And to be honest, you're not going to have that mentality if you follow all the points that I gave. And like I said, this is just my personal advice. These are things that I have found to help me, things that I've learned from a professional. Sorry, y'all. My dog started barking at me. But that means I've talked enough. And I've taken enough of your time. And I really hope that this video helped you out because I really want to make videos like this. Like, I feel like I have so much to share about my journey with grief and understanding it. And I'm taking it day by day. And, you know, I'm glad that I waited like a year of me understanding my grief and dealing with it before I started making these videos because I don't know that I would give the best advice. And who would I be to give advice on grief that I was new to experiencing. Um, and I don't have this shit figured out. I learn every single day, but I think now I have a, a positive understanding of grief. And I want to share that with you guys because obviously loss is very hard and very sad, but your healing journey doesn't have to be. You can recover and life goes on don't be you know don't let your life go to waste you die a little each day so live today okay you're gonna die anyways live today i love y'all that's all i have to say i need to go and do something so take care you guys um that's all i have nothing else to say love you